The death of King Edward I of England was a significant point in the Scottish War of Independence, as his successor, the now King Edward II, was not as administrative or as military-minded as his late father. The lack of these traits would cause Edward II many issues during his reign. With Edward II busy trying to consolidate his rule over his barons and earls after a quick but indecisive campaign into Scotland, the time away has given King Robert the breathing room he needed to fight his Scottish enemies. A civil war in the middle of a war of independence would be a difficult thing to manage, but thanks to King Robert's victory at Loudon Hill, he gained more support. King Robert's main Scottish enemy was the Cummins clan, as in 1306, King Robert killed John Cummin at Greyfriars Abbey, starting a blood feud that would linger for years. But now without the support of an active English army or administration, King Robert could now fight on an even playing field. Robert's first target was the MacDougall clan, a close ally of the Cummins, who inflicted a great defeat on Robert at the Battle of Dowry and nearly captured him. The main clansman that Robert was after was Dungal MacDougall, as he was the man that had defeated Robert's brothers at Galloway and subsequently captured and executed them both. There would be no mercy for any of Robert's enemies, and by September 1307, Robert's forces had laid such devastation upon the MacDougall's land that refugees fled to England for protection from Robert's wrath. As King Robert's power base grew with each victory, his Scottish enemies soon sent word to King Edward begging for help, as they had little money to recruit fresh troops. King Edward sent his cousin, John of Brittany, to Galloway. John was a novice to warfare, but a skilled diplomat. And by the time he reached Galloway, there was no sight of King Robert or his men. John then moved north towards Berwick and received the reports that Robert had moved north towards Inverlochy, giving John little chance of catching him, as winter would halt any large scale of movement of troops. King Robert's troops were marching along the Great Glen, and having secured a brief truce with the MacDougalls, Robert could now assault the Cummins territory without interference from the English, as they had no garrisons in the north of Scotland. Inverlochy Castle was soon besieged and fell by October, followed by Urquhart Castle and then Nairn Castle, which Robert then burnt to the ground. The next target would have been Friendraft Castle, but Robert became incredibly ill and was at one point close to death. The Earl of Buchan, who was the cousin of John Cummins, soon found Robert's position, and with Robert still ill, the Earl quickly raised an army. However, the Earl was hesitant to attack, as he could not see Robert's troops' positions clearly, as the area in which Robert rested was a forest bog and was not suitable for an open battle. Instead, a brief skirmish only involving archers occurred before the Earl left to gather more men. But, by the time he returned, Robert and his men were gone. King Robert had partially recovered by March of 1308, and was on the offensive again, attacking a castle at Tarradale, before heading east towards Old Maldrum. And while travelling along the road, Robert's forces were attacked by the Earl of Buchan, who encouraged his men by stating that Robert was close to death and couldn't lead his forces into battle. And as the fighting was underway, Robert mounted his horse and was held up by two of his men to give the impression that he was leading his troops. This action was enough to make the Earl's troops fall back and eventually flee the field of battle. The Earl did try and rally his men, but to little avail and soon fled all the way to England there was now no opposition in the Cummins' lands, and Robert took the opportunity to utterly destroy his enemy's lands. 
What followed next was called the Harrowing of Buchan. Robert's men burnt, pillaged, and killed anyone who was loyal to the Cummins. The devastation was so severe, it took many years for the land to recover. The final part of reclaiming the north came with the reconquest of Aberdeen. Now King Robert could move south and deal with the MacDougals, and with his brother and James Douglas back from the south after the Douglas Larder event, King Robert began to raise more troops for a springtime campaign and soon had enough manpower to launch a raid into Galloway, led by James Douglas, who had mastered the art of raiding. The raid was quick and brutal, with Douglas defeating a small force led by Dungal MacDougall, who then promptly fled to England despite efforts to capture him. There were now only two MacDougall clansmen left in Scotland, Alexander and his son John. King Robert had to use ambushes and hit and run tactics to survive against his enemies. Now, they had to use the same tactics, as by August 1308, Robert headed to Argyll, the last stronghold, which was through the Pass of Brander. The Pass of Brander is a mountain pass that follows the River Ore, a perfect place to expect an ambush, as John was planning to surprise and defeat Robert here. Yet John could not personally lead his troops, as he was suffering from an illness, and could only watch his men from a galley on the river. John's men were preparing to strike from the slopes of Mount Ben Cruachan, where they could rain down arrows and boulders, and then charge down and rout Robert's army. However, Robert was aware that an ambush would be likely, given his own experience of conducting them and given he was in enemy territory, he knew the likelihood of one was high, so Robert sent James Douglas ahead with a lightly armoured detachment to climb higher up the slopes in order to spot any ambushes further ahead. James quickly found John's army and waited until they attacked Robert's main force before he ordered his men to charge down onto the MacDougals. Now stuck between two forces, they soon broke and fled in all directions. With this victory, King Robert had defeated all of his Scottish enemies. Any that remained in Scotland would soon pledge fealty to Robert or flee to England. Yet the south of Scotland was still firmly in English hands, and the castles in the south were better garrisoned and fortified than those in the north. However, Robert had the time to build a strong base of operations, as King Edward II was in the midst of internal conflicts due to his poor leadership and favouritism towards Piers Gaveston. <laughs> 